first takes place early in the book. Uh, the Bosnian Serb army is only hours from entry into town and promised UN airstrikes against the tanks have not materialized. Tens of thousands of people are fleeing to the main Dutch base in Potocheri, a town that's five kilometers east of Srebrenica. The boy, Atev, had been in hospital recovering from an artillery attack that killed three of his friends. His mother, Maria, has just taken him from the hospital and they're fighting their way through the crowd back to the house where the uh, family friend named Ina is waiting with her twin daughters. And they're going to join the, uh, the flight to Potocheri. Atif and his mother fought against the crowd and emerged on the shoulder next to their house. The white concrete face was pitted from shrapnel and coated with soot. The second story balcony was filled to the eave with split firewood. Thick, clear plastic covered the windows and a hole in the roof had been repaired with scrap lumber. Ina appeared in the doorway and waved to them. Atif released his mother and ran through the rows of vegetables that used to be their lawn. He gave Ina a quick hug. She tapped him on the back. Go get your bag. Hurry. Inside the kitchen, Ina's twin daughters, Layla and Adila, stood at the table sorting through piles of carrots, potatoes, and clumps of soil. We left your bag on your mattress, Layla said. We didn't know what you wanted to bring. Pack light active, his mother said. You don't need any clothes. Leave room for food and... She hesitated and stepped towards the door. People were shouting outside. What's going on, Layla asked. They crowded the porch and leaned over the railing to look south. I don't see any tanks, Ina said. The people in the crowd looked skyward. Fingers pointed to the north. Atif ran into the yard and looked up, shielding his eyes from the high sun. He scanned the clear blue sky above the steep hills surrounding the town. And thunder rolled and faded, then rolled again. A helicopter, he wondered but the noise didn't make the sound, chopping echo he'd expect from a helicopter. A plane? His first thought skipped to the early days of the war when the Serbs used to bomb the town from slow-moving, propeller-driven airplanes. They were easy to recognize. They sounded like mosquitoes. But this wasn't a mosquito. This was bigger, louder, like a hornet. And two silver-gray blurs split the air like lightning. Thunder clapped. The crowd screeched. Atif slapped his hands against his ears and bent over as air rushed in to fill the vacuum left behind the fast-moving aircraft. His ribs vibrated. He straightened up and swung around to glimpse the planes as they threaded the needle between the hills and disappeared towards the south. Atif made a fist and punched the air. Yes, yes, they came. I knew they'd come. I knew they'd save us. The crowd slowed and thousands of eyes settled on the southern horizon. They listened to the distant rumble change pitch. An explosion echoed between the hills. The crowd burst into cheers and applause. Yes, yes, Atif screamed at the sky. I knew you'd come. I knew it. The planes rose as two dots above the horizon. As they turned, the sun glinted off their wings. The planes dove, then climbed again a second time. He waited for more explosions, but heard nothing. The aircraft disappeared from sight. Smoke drifted into the sky behind the southern hills. The crowd scanned the skies, looking for their saviors. Fingers pointed in every direction until the thunder returned. A single jet followed the same path from the north, sweeping low over the edge of town and streaking straight up into the sky. A second bomb detonated below. Go, 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 Atif shouted. He turned to his mother. We're going to be okay, Mama. We're going to be okay. They waited for more, but the thunder faded and the glints vanished from the sky. The crowd resumed walking towards Potocheri. Come on, Atif, his mother said. We have to get ready. What? No, he replied. We don't have to go. They'll come back. The Chetniks won't come in now. His mother took him by the shoulders. Listen to me, Atif. We both know that two bombs mean nothing. There are too many Chetniks, and until we know for sure, we're better off in Potocheri. Atif glared at his mother. She pointed through the door to a Dutch peacekeeper walking among the refugees. Look at them. We have to follow them. We're not going to turn back until they do. To Potocheri, the peacekeeper shouted, Chetniks come. No one turned back.